Welcome to the first best of five of the evening. We're on Ascension Tour. You are spawning to the bottom right in pink, playing Protoss uh, as random. We have Azalis. And to the top left in blue, it's our Terran from Poland. It's Estate. Yeah, Estate is Spanish for summer, but Estate herself is from Poland, if I recall that correctly. And actually the game is pretty loud for me. If it's also too loud for you, just tell me within the chat and I'll try to do my best in order to get rid of it. As start in the meantime, starting with the usual gas into barracks. So we will probably see a Reaper right after it, while Azalus just does her gateway into double assimilator into Scout. Okay, would have been really surprised there. So we might actually see some tech-heavy push coming out of Azalus. No proxy yet, but maybe she'll proxy at some point in the game. Uh, we have to, or I have to remind new viewers that Lady Azalus switched to random for this season. Protoss has been, or had been, her... Well, actually it looks like as, uh, as if she really does want to play some proxy shenanigans over here. Probably going to go for... Um, an Oracle build, a Stargate build, somewhere over here, just waiting for the Subnetics core to finish. And in the meantime, throwing down the first pylon, we have a Reaper incoming. Yeah, Lady Azalis, uh, Lady Azalis used to play Protoss only, but then switched to random. So Protoss, of course, still is probably her best race, I guess. Since, uh, yeah, you just don't get rid of all these long years of experienced gameplay. So, summon next score finishes, and now we will see whether it's going to be a Stargate, and here it is. Yeah, just figuring from the location, that far away you usually don't want to build a ground-based proxy push. Uh, then you would rather choose this part around here, so that your units will arrive at the entrance to the natural real quickly. But uh, this way around a Stargate makes much more sense. Probably going to see an Oracle, but we could also see some sort of Void Ray push incoming. And she just wanted to make sure that the Stargate wouldn't get scouted. So in the meantime, we have the SUV scouting a little bit more, scouting this location, but it won't find anything. So good choice by Lady Azalis to put the proxy over here. Okay, a gateway over here. So yeah, we're actually going to see a full push. And so this first oracle was pretty clear, but I think Azalis will go into Void Race behind this and then just prepare this warp in point for later on. And we'll then just try to get through the entrance by sheer force. Is not trying to take an expansion over here, but the Reaper knows it. So, uh, Estata knows that some sort of one base push is very likely to happen. Just scouts once more, now wants to get inside the base. Might even see that a pylon is missing if the Adept lets her. But she has to go out before the Adept can kill her. There would also have been a Mothership Core available over here. So it would have probably been quite problematic for Estata to see all of the base and figure out that one pylon was missing. But she might have an idea already. He's already loading things into the bunker and getting Widow Mines in position as well. So Oracle flies in, has not gotten seen, I think. There is no Widow Mine over here, so let's see if the Oracle... The Oracle could actually deal quite some damage here to Estatus uh, economy. Estatus reacting very quickly here, just pulling away everything, but losing the Mule is, of course, uh, something that hurts her quite a lot. And there we see the, uh, the Void Ray coming right behind it, as I said and predicted. We might even actually get the Widow Mine here, which is a really nice catch there as well. So this Oracle paid for itself quite nicely here. Oh, where's the other Widow Mine? There was a Widow Mine over here. Okay, she put it into the Mineral Line. Good choice there in order to make the Mineral Line a little bit more secure. Also getting an Engineering Bay right behind it because she wants to get turrets out. Out. But hmm, actually everything is looking kind of okay. I mean, Estatzer still knows that it's probably going to be a one base push. I feel she should throw down a few more bunkers here. And there the second one is incoming. But still, don't really know if it's going to work out that nicely. Getting a Liberator is actually a nice idea. Trying to cover this part with the Liberation Zone would be really nice. But there the push is incoming. We have one bunker and a few units out. Also pulling the boys as quickly as possible. Does not want to let that bunker die at all. So we don't really have that much firepower here for Lady Azalus. Maybe she should have waited a little bit longer in order to get more units together so that this push would have hit really hard. 
<coughs> and I'm sorry for that. But like I said, can't really help it. Another Vaudere incoming, a few more units get warped in as well, but she's only on one base economy, so uh, this push has to deal some significant damage pretty soon and actually outright kill her opponent, or she will just fall infinitely behind and will just has to um, will just have to forfeit the game at that point in game uh, at that point in time. So let's see. Okay, getting the widow mine with the Oracle Revelation. So let's see, we'll actually be able to take out the widow mine. Okay, it's, it's unburned it tries to take uh, tries to save it but does not really happen to do it okay first bunker dies to the void ray fire and the second bunker does not die yeah we now have the change that the void ray is a little bit more uh, is a little bit slower now because of the um, of the charged up state it's in so that's new to this patch where the borders I think lose about 30 to 40 percent of their speed while being in the phase mode. So if she can't really get down that bunker in, it looks more and more unlikely. I mean, as long as the Void Rays do not have their charge and uh, there's not a second one, then it could actually be kind of problematic to get something down. Okay, trying to get rid of the Liberator here. Nice move there, but the Marines are there. I think she could have actually just tried to really get it down, maybe even sacrificing the Void Ray because getting that Liberation Zone down would have been really, really important for her. So, thus far it's only Stalkers here, but we don't have that many units. I mean, it's almost as many Stalkers as there are Marines. Only one bunker left. The bunker, of course, helping out quite a lot. And uh, Estata doing her best to zone out her opponent with everything that can zone out an opponent. A Widow Mine here, a Liberator up here. Now really problematic to get into, uh, to get close to the Liberator with a Void Ray anymore. So, more Liberators in the making. I think there was actually a second... No, okay. Medevac also really important for her. More pylons being thrown down, so she, she doesn't really want to supply block herself. Going in once more. But again, I mean, as long as she can't really take down these bunkers, it will become more and more problematic for her to win the game. This game is not over yet, but like I said, our Lady Azul is totally all in. She needs to win with this one push. If she can't do it, the game will be over. So game will end here in just a few more seconds. Now she moves in. It's barely outside the Liberation Zone. Not with this one stalker though. Okay, another Liberation Zone getting set up. Not actually the best Liberation Zone can easily take out that Liberator. They had not the best positioning there with the Liberator. But yeah, breaking through all of this counter repair will be pretty problematic for Azalis as well. So getting in more stalkers here. Don't really know if... Uh, I mean... Uh, Getting, getting some zealots wouldn't really help out. Maybe a few adepts would have actually been kind of nice in order to just do more damage to these marines. Because stalker is actually not the best against marines, but if you have a number like that, it doesn't really matter. Now moving in, uh, Stata does not really want to fight that far out with her marines here. And again, this gives a good force field here, but unfortunately not doing quite what it was supposed to do all of the it's it's right on top of that bunker but all the SEVs still get to the edges of the bunker being able to counter repair it so it didn't really work out <laughs> trying to throw down another bunker here as Sutter in the meantime being really hectic but there's nothing built on Ezra's side while Sutter is still trying to get everything done even going for the armor level one do we already have the plus one upgrade actually we do Okay, nice little upgrade here. Like I said, the counter repair is just OP. Even with the firepower of the charged up void rays, it doesn't matter. She just can't break the counter healing of the SUVs and all of these units die little by little. And now this push has lost a lot of its firepower, especially with no Void Rays here. I mean, with three Void Rays and focus firing down at that bunker, it might actually work. Or maybe focus firing down with the Void Rays and then just trying to snipe uh, one SCV at a time with the rest of these Stalkers. Then she might have been able to finally break through, but with only... Uh, a clicking on that bunker, it didn't quite work out. Yeah, time bomb does not really help at all. The liberator is still intact, though, yeah, only at half health, but still, it's like I said, pretty difficult to reach, and now it's even getting counter repaired as well. I mean, Estata's position is quite okay. She still knows that her opponent has not thrown down a base, so she knows that she's still under pressure, but if she holds, she will be ahead and actually in a winning position. Okay, another push here, SCVs counter repairing once more, doesn't quite work, and with the with a siege tank in a good position, it will be it will be these stalkers will be done for. 
uh, has to move in now, tries to get close to the bunker, but does not get it, and now the force is you know, just but destroyed. Lady Ezelis does not want to type out yet, probably wants to wait for another warp in round, but yeah, that, that should be like the last attack. A stutter, like I said before, just knows that the only thing she needs to do now is hold. Her economy is way better than uh, that of her opponent. Uh, even with almost the same amount of workers, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there's, there are mules in as well, but of course, the biggest problem is that Azalea's base is almost mined out. Uh, and she's heavily oversaturated at that point in time. While Astata has a healthy economy on these two bases. Very nice. And can even transfer some workers from up here to down there. There's still space. Is even making a few SCVs here and there and... Uh, here and there if she can. Now trying to get Stim out will still take some time, but now we have two siege tanks. Don't really like the positioning of that siege tank. It might be a little bit two way forward, but of course then there's also this widow mine that can easily take out a few BAM! Big shot onto the stalkers. Yeah, these are way too many forces. I mean if you have a look at the army supply, it's already 46 to 29. No way for Lady Azalus to break through this. No way whatsoever. I mean, the only way to deal some damage right now would be to just avoid this 45 position at all and find a way to get into the main base with like a warp prism. But Asset has even covered that with the auto turret over here. Uh, not the auto turret, the turret. Just the usual turret over here. And uh, I mean, she, the only thing she now has to do is to wait. Just get more units, get more workers, maybe get a third base up even and waiting for Stim to finish. And once Stim is out, she can just easily walk across the map and kill her opponent. Ooh, and Lady Ezel is actually trying to get the 400 minerals up in order to throw down Naxxus. But, I mean, this, this game is done. I'm really sorry, guys, but there's nothing, nothing at all she can do. Like, like really nothing. I mean, her income is, it's, it's... Three times the income of Azalis at that point in time, and the Nexus will take another 70 seconds to make. So at that point in time, the economy will have gotten such a big boost. It it just doesn't matter. I mean, this army is already way bigger and better upgraded than the one of her opponent. Yeah, um, I mean, this is this is just playing it out. I mean, it was an all in, and if your all in does not succeed, it's of course, okay, to try to get out. Maybe your opponent does a mistake. Maybe your opponent is way too scared to move out. Um, and just gives you the time to actually build up again and then maybe counter them. But I don't really think that a stud will do that. And yeah, now moving out with a marine. Wants to see if the army is still there. Sees that the pylon is the only thing that's left. And uh, like I said, I think, yeah, that should, that should trigger her to move out. Unloads. Her bunkers unsieges the tanks and will probably move out in just a few seconds, yeah. And once this army moves over here, or maybe even Azalis realizes with the Oracle that the army is moving across the map, she can actually just type GG. Because yeah, I mean, like I said, yeah, I know a caster is supposed to hype the game, but, but come on, come on. I mean, I take my audience seriously. Huh? I know that you are not stupid, and I know that you know what you're watching, and that you know something about StarCraft, and that this game is over. So I won't pretend that it's not, and insult you by doing so. That's just not my style. I, d I don't insult my audience <laughs> by treating them as, they, as though they were dumb. No way. Yeah, getting a good siege position, but yeah, like I said, I think, I think these marines actually with Stim should just work on their own. Uh, GG! And the stutter takes the first map. Sequences our second map. We have Lady Azalis playing random and spawning a Zerk to the top right. And to the bottom left our blue Terran Estate. Funny enough Estate is actually her NA name and Unfabulous is her EU name and she is from Poland so playing on, e, on uh, EU but uh, yeah back when I asked her which name I should take for uh, the FSL she was a little bit uncertain whether she wanted to use Unfabulous or Estate but then decided for Estate after all so that's her handle in the FSL right now 
Barracks. This barracks looks a little bit off. Is this too far to the right? I think it is. This this looks like a really big gap. I think this is a misplaced barracks here. She's probably going to realize it in a few moments, but she can always transfer it. Lady Asla's going for a hatch first. Uh, then gas into pool, standard circle opening. Nothing all too special here, so it doesn't look as if she wants to push her opponent very early on. Spawning pool in the making, as such we'll get the full scout and know what's up, but yeah, actually she didn't really have to go inside the main. I mean, of course, there's this slight little chance where your opponent actually wants to go three hatch before pool, so of course it's always good to send your SCV in while it's there anyways, and just see whether a spawning pool is actually getting built or not, because if your opponent does not get a spawning pool, you really want to throw down a few additional barracks and get the reaper production going, and Kill your greedy as hell opponent. I mean, on Sequencer, it might actually work. Getting through with three of this map is just huge. It, but but actually, the distance from one entrance to the other is not really that 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 uh, that long. I mean, it's longer than on the usual maps, but not really that long. And Reapers are pretty fast, so yeah. I mean, if if you actually scouted that with the SCV that your opponent was going three hatch for pool, just get the reproduction going and stomp them. Like the greedy asses they are. That's just something you cannot uh, let go unpunished. So, Queens in production, the first few Zerklings, probably just scouting Zerklings. Uh, uh, would actually prefer, oh, there they are, four Zerklings, so she can maybe send out two in order to cover these Zalnaga Watchtowers and then the other two to send them towards the front in order to get a good scout and maybe let like one Ling behind so that you will be able to send it in later on in order to see what kind of. Uh, composition your opponent is building, um, although we have to say that Estate has been playing bio bio all day long. I don't think she's really a mecking player, so usually you don't really have to be all too afraid. And most of the time she's actually going straight into, uh, into bio as well, after the typical Hellion uh, build early on. Because opening Hellions is just pretty standard. Uh, we'll actually get... Um, um, we'll actually get... Um, also pretty typical, the Banshee right behind it, maybe even with Cloak. Uh, the Tech Club is needed for the Banshee anyways, but uh, maybe she wants to get Cloak as well. First few Hellions are out, we'll probably build two more before moving out. But there's already a lot of links in production as well, Lair in the making as well, but not really trying to get a third base up anytime soon. So Estata really wants to check this once more, sends her SCV back, it gets eaten up, but she knows that no third base had been taken over here, but instead, oh never mind, I even forgot it because this was everything, everything was in purple, uh, or everything was in pink. So yeah, the, there's the third base over here, so never mind. But Estate does not know, so she might actually expect her opponent to go for some two-base timing here. We'll see. Yeah, the reason why she didn't take the third base over here is that on this uh, map we only have uh, six mineral patches and one gas geyser. It's of course the easier one to take and the easier one to protect. Well, I, actually I think you can argue whether it's so much easier to protect this one over this one. I mean, this one is also net very far away. If you position your army around here, it's almost the same distance to that base as it is to that base. I mean, of course, there's there's two entrances to this base, which are wide open, and also, of course, the big area behind it. So, of course, it's easier to attack this one, but I think one can really argue. There's also the possibility for tanks to siege up around here and siege the mineral line. So yeah, I think people can really argue. And this one, of course, is the standard expansion where you have eight minerals and two Vespine geysers. So that's why Azalis decided to take that one. Because if you want to play a longer macro game as a Zerg, you really want to have these gases out. So Hellions on the way with a Reaper as well will probably move towards the third first. Yeah, she does. She really wants to know whether there is a third or not. Might even get a drone kill over here. Lady Asus actually only has lings. And that could be really problematic here. Ugh, if it's starting micros her aliens correctly, that is. But yeah, not losing this one over here. Moving back a little bit. I don't really think she needed to fully retreat here. Could have actually just pushed her opponent a little bit more. Has already triggered her to um, create 10 more. Oh, looks like Lady Azalus actually wants to intercept the units or just wants to have a look whether they are still there or not. And they are not. So, hmm. 
cooling her heels there, it feel, I uh -huh. feel. But it uh, seems as if Estata really didn't want to lose these Hellions whatsoever. Could have actually just morphed them into... Oh no, there's no armory here, never mind. And uh, Estata taking the easier... Whatever that means, to protect base over here. Armory actually in the making, so, hmm, fairly interesting there. But probably just for the upgrades. Where are the upgrades? Yeah, 1-1 one, one is almost finished. And for 2-2... Two, two, a Terran needs this little building back here finished, the armory. Otherwise, they cannot really transition into 2 2 upgrades. While uh, we actually get the 2 0 for Lady Azalus. So she's keeping up with the upgrades here. Nicely done so far. Everything is looking kind of okay for her. Not that many workers, though. If we have a look at the income tab, Terran is looking a little bit better due to mules. But yeah, she's just saturating her third base over here. Will take a little bit of time. Is conservatively uh, droning here. And also getting the armor upgrade. While going into a quick infestation pit. There's the first raven up here. We'll probably get that queen. No, actually Lady Azalus manages to get through that. Only losing one drone, if I saw it correctly. Okay, raven has enough energy for another turret. Yeah, throw that in. Yeah, auto turrets, so annoying, deal a lot of damage, but yeah, if she actually just sent in the links in order to kill it. And now we have two drone kills, like one with the first turret, uh, one with the other one. Still, it's just energy, and the raven, uh, the next time the raven will be needed, it will have already regained the energy. So, yeah, I mean, getting getting two worker kills for energy, why not? You know, we just take it. So, in the meantime, all the good upgrades for... Uh, Asati here, getting 2-2, almost halfway done, also getting Stim, which is now done. A uh, few more Widow Mines, so it's just the typical bio-mine composition, and now she will probably go for the 60 Marine Drop somewhere. I feel that Lady Azalus should really try to get a fourth base up as quickly as possible. Hasn't been able to... Yeah, she's probably afraid of a really big push because she's just producing 32 links and a lot of Banes, which is... A good guess. I mean, around that time, you really should be worried about the army moving across the map towards your position, especially if you don't really have that good of a map vision. So, I mean, creep spread is, well, is, is existent, but only barely away from the main, uh, from the natural entrance here. Okay, nice little move around there by Estata trying to find a position where she can just unload and deal some damage, but there are just way too many forces here. I mean, nothing to really take out these Manavex out of the sky. Uh, so, yeah, that's always annoying. I mean, Estata is flying around, keeping her opponent on her heels and always keeping her busy, which usually leads to a lot of build-up uh, with the resources, because when you're microing around, it's pretty difficult to keep a good eye on your macro as well, especially if the race you're playing has not always been your main race. So yeah, of course, that's, that's what it's doing for her. You know, just um, keeping her opponent busy microing and thus just letting her macro slip, which is a small little thing you can do. I mean, as long as the injects are okay, it doesn't really matter for Zerg that much if they are not just getting straight out attacked and um, if they just miss uh, to produce units because as long as the lava just is gathering up you can always just produce these units at another point in time. Of course if your opponent hits a critical timing and you need like every unit you can have then of course it's bad for Zerg to sit on a lot of lava but uh, if there's no such imminent threat then it's kinda okay-ish forgivable to just let the lava pile up for a little bit and then produce all of the units later. But the units are not lost, is what I want to say. Unless uh, in the unit production of uh, a Terran. Uh, unlike, sorry, unlike the uh, unit production of a Terran or a Protoss works, where if you just miss a production cycle, uh, the units are gone. Uh, they, they can't really be produced anymore. So the Raven helping to clear the creep a little bit here. This is a really big and dangerous push here. We have a lot of wooden mines in position, so it would be pretty problematic for Lady Azalus to just attack into this position. But as long as her opponent is not really getting out the creep, she does not really feel the necessity to engage this army over here. She has a lot of good units here. She has Mutilus and Banelings and Links, also kind of good upgrades. Better upgrades though for Estate, who's already getting 3-2. My god, Estate is really our upgrade king. 
I rarely see a Terran getting upgrades that quickly within the game, but of course it's a good decision, it's a good thing to do. Um, especially against Zerg, where you build a lot of Marines, and every Marine uh, profits from this upgrade so you so immensely. So, Investor's getting a nice fungal over here, now the Lings and Banes are rolling in almost no splits there by Astate, and what splits there are are not the best ones, so the whole army is actually getting annihilated while trying to tear down these rocks here. Getting the rocks, but not really getting the army. There's the rest of the troop moving in, of course. And yeah, with, Mut with Mutas alone, you don't really want to fight these. Still Infestors and Banelings, though. So this army, yeah, Astata obviously um, smells the blood and water, thinks that she will be able to kill us off. Nice little fungal there. Getting a good chunk of the marines here that cannot split under the fungal. And now the rest of the army units are getting killed as well. Ooh, no! Don't... Okay, there's the rest of the... Uh, another another troop incoming. We have more blue units moving across the map. So Stutter wants to keep up the pressure. Uh, thus far we only have links, but a lot of links that can keep these army units busy until the banelings finally hatch. Yeah. With links alone, you never want to fight against almost three... Zero, a uh, three-two upgraded Marines here. Man, these these things kill the kill stuff so quickly. Sometimes it's really ridiculous to see it. Thirty-four more links in the making. Might actually lose this fourth base over here. I think it would be a very wise idea to take a fourth in the meantime because you will probably not be able to secure this one, or maybe she will. Ooh, more bailings incoming, and finally she manages to crush this army, but there's still the two Winter Mines. Might actually get a good shot here. No, the bailings explode before the Winter Mines can actually shoot. But there's only one fungal left, and now unfortunately the Infestors are A-moving into the Terran army. Not getting killed, though. And with the help of the Lings, it should eventually be possible for Lady Azlis to get rid of that constant constant aggression there by a stutter well in the end it doesn't really matter losing a few more mutas over here as well still has some army over here pretty much wants to have a few more banelings though yeah stutter building up a pretty heavy gas count but that's just fairly typical for a turn at that point in game and now it looks as if uh, Asata actually wants to go for a Doom Drop here. No, that was just a misclick. Unfortunately, uh, loading in a few units here. Okay, yeah, these Banelings should clear this up pretty easily. But still, I mean, these are not the most cost-efficient Banelings I've ever seen. Uh, just killing off a big chunk of Marines for only to face the next one to come. But it seems as if Asata has had enough for now. Yeah, we'll probably lose all of her medevacs, which is actually the huge part in here. All of those. Wow, that was actually finally the little thing that Azalis needed in order to drive her opponent back to her own base. But yeah, the good thing is that right behind it, Astata has managed to take a fourth base. It has the third one secured as well. Might actually go into a fifth one pretty soon. And uh, yeah, so now uh, Lady Azalis and Astata are on even bases. So Lady Azalis actually managed to hold this push quite well and now has a big chunk of muters flying around. Yeah, good scan there by Astata really wants to know if a fifth base is already up or not and it is not. So she will probably feel very comfortable here. Uh, the only thing I really wonder is why she doesn't build any turrets. Like any. I mean she's seen a big flock of muters chasing her medevacs and killing them off, but she doesn't have any turrets. I think the reason for that is that she's used that that usually she's uh, well no, I think the reason for that is that she's used to actually keep her opponent pinned back with her constant aggression so that they will actually never have the chance to send the mutas across the map in order to kill off units? I don't know. Uh, I mean, her, her aggression was really relentless for quite some time and I think a lot of Zerg players would have died at that point in the game. But uh, yeah, not you know, getting, getting some mobile anti-air against the mutas with a Thor. But like I said, I mean, no turrets, no turrets whatsoever. Luckily! For her, uh, Azalis is not really abusing the fact and is not sending her mutas across the map. Could easily take out that worker line over here and that worker line over here. Well, not at once, of course, but yeah, I mean, this this is obviously the better one to attack because we have eight mineral patches over here and only six over here. So it's more likely to get more workers killed. 
over at that uh, side. So yeah, luckily Forest Dutter Azalis is not. <laughs> Maz Marines win the game. Marines, 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 GG. We'll see if the Carbot cartoon will be true once more. Yeah, this is this is like pure Marine only. So a stutter really wants to pressure her opponent with just splitting. This is a lot of bailings tasteless. But there's a lot of marines as well. Kinda okay splitting. A lot of marines fall, but it just doesn't matter because the sheer mass is just overwhelming. And of course the 3-2 upgrades also do their job. 3-3 three, three marines are a horrifying thing for a Zerg player. Trying to get the Ultralisk Cavern out, but it will take some time to get Ultralisk as well. Fourth base is dead. There's another one over here to the left hand side, but it does not really matter as much because it's not even saturated right now. And if she cannot stop that push from moving more into her natural base with more and more reinforcements moving across the map, I feel as if Lady Azalis might be dead here already. Yeah, the misclick loading in a few Marines. I do this all the time. When I'll play Terran. So, but it looks like... Okay, this would have been a little bit of a traitor here. Uh, also hitting these units quite a lot. And these Manavacs are totally out of energy. Well, mostly. <laughs> Still more Marines coming in. Looks as if the second base might die as well. Nice counter-attack there by Lady Azalis. Trying to catch the reinforcements before they can arrive at the front. But I don't think it's actually going to matter anymore. Four Ultralisks, they might actually save the day, yeah? But at what cost? I mean, that's that's really the big thing here. So now the Ultralisks engaging into the fight. All of the Marines are going to die. Marines not really that good against Ultralisks, even with 3-3. Three, three. I mean, these Ultralisks are not fully upgraded yet. The uh, Chitinous plating is not done and also the plus 3 upgrade for the armor is missing as well. But yeah, Marines still not really that good against Ultras, especially if not microed properly. So the uh, seems as if the Ultras may actually... Yeah, instead of just doing the ring around the rosy thing once more, just loading up, flying around with their medevacs, unloading them wherever the Ultras are not. And killing more workers. 33 have already died. It's now 73 ridiculous workers against 27. And of course, a fifth base for a stutter right behind it. Could actually even take a sixth base somewhere. Pro maybe around here, but that's also a small one. Yeah, but she does want to take it because it's just at a nice location there. Yeah, trying to get some units out because she knows that she can't really take out these stupid medivacs without the help of some anti air. And unfortunately, Ultralists can't jump into the sky and uh, catch the medivacs and tear them down to earth. So also getting some liberators here in order to deal with the Ultralisks. Yeah, but the Ultralisks are pretty bruised as well. And like I said, this is of course annoying. As long as you don't have enough muters around, it's so annoying to always just having to follow this stupid Matavex to wherever they go. Yeah, but there's not much uh, that uh, Aesthetic can do here. Actually, yeah, I think it would have been better to evacuate these Matavex earlier on. I mean, there, there's just so much damage you can deal and she's already dealt a lot of it. So I think it would have been wiser to not let all of these Matavex die to these muters now and instead if she had just retreated with them a little bit earlier, but it seems as if she doesn't really need them anymore. So big chunk of Marines plus Liberators plus one Widow Mine and, a, and one Medivac. Okay, and it seems as if Lady Azalis might be overextending here. No, uh, just want to make sure that uh, she got most of these Medivacs before retreating. Yeah, but the biggest problem for her right now is, of course, that she does not have enough workers. 73 to 33, 40 workers difference, 200 supply maxed out to 87 and 127 army supply to 54. I mean, upgrades are really good for Azalus. We have to give her that, totally. But upgrades are also pretty good for Estate. And uh, I think the overwhelming numbers will just eventually whittle Azalus down. I think it's just a matter of time until the Terran should take out the Zerg player. Uh, getting the plus one weapons uh, for ships. 
because uh, she wants to uh, she wants these liberators to do even more damage against the ultralisks. I mean, these ultralisks are pretty GG. Ultralisks realize that's nothing I can win anymore, and two to zero for Estate. Defender's landing is Azalus' choice. She spawned once more as her former main race, Protoss, while playing random. And Astate needs only one more game to close it out. Ooh, going for a quick scout. Yeah, probably because Defender's Landing is the map with the shortest rush distance of them all. So she wants to make sure that her opponent has not spawned as Zerk and is preparing a 13 pool. In the meantime, going for a usual opener. No reason to totally freak out. So he sees that the opponent is Protoss. Should actually make you feel better. First assimilator. Let's see if there's a second. Uh, there will be a second one as well, and maybe another proxy. Expansion though, for Azlis, pretty early on. So this time around, no proxy shenanigan in a re. Reaper in the making. Nothing all too interesting happening over right now. <laughs> Nothing I can really commentate on. I've also talked about the map features very often. Like this cooling tower over here that people usually want to tear down in order to close this gap so that there will only be one way into the natural base. Of course you can always break through this debris once more. But uh, it will take some time and your opponent usually will know when you want to do it. So they will be prepared for your attack. Reaper moving around, wants to get a good scout once more. Mothership Core is in place, so Astata has to leave immediately again. Might have seen the robotics facility getting thrown down. Uh, I mean, she's seen the building probably, but had, did she have time to click on it in order to see what it was, is the question. And no special response so far, only Widow Mines being produced, and I think these are just the typical Widow Mines she uses for Oracle defenses. Starport right behind it. Yeah, wants to get Medivex out as quickly as possible. But we will probably see a Twilight Council right after this robotics facility. Or maybe not. Two more gateways. Looks as if Lady Aslis wants to prepare it. Okay, getting an observer, which is just the typical thing to do, even sending it across the map, which is not that typical to do actually nowadays, because there's always the threat of widow mines getting dropped inside your natural and main base mineral lines, and then you usually want to have some detection out in order. But yeah, that's what the second observer is for. And there we have the Twilight Council. As I said, not really a great prediction on my behalf, since it's just a typical thing to do nowadays. You just need to know your metagame, and you're pretty fine to commentate. So one with a mine in the uh, mineral line over here, a few marines over here, which would actually not suffice in order to take out a, an oracle. I think you need five marines, if I'm not mistaken, in order to take out an oracle. Four alone can... Uh, be taken out by the oracle itself and then we'll still have some energy to kill off workers. But of course, in the meantime, um, Estata might have had the chance to pull them away. So nice observer positioning here and we'll see whenever the Terran army is trying to move out. 
So we'll give her a nice little warning. And even getting observers in position for drop play. I like this by Lady Azalus a lot. Producing observers like crazy to get a great map vision everywhere. So that's just something I like to see a lot. Only having one observer with the army. So that you will be able to clean up um, Widow Mines if needed. And there's the first one getting killed. There's of course an, uh, another one. And unfortunately the army is quite out of position. Trying to fire up that pile on here. But it's just light, slightly out of reach. So the Widow Mine will be able to burrow. And yeah, we'll probably take out... Ooh, aid workers. That was really horrible here. Yeah? yeah, just tried to pull the probes away in the last second. But it was too late already. And uh, thus she even helped her opponent by clumping the probes up here. So that the impact of the shot was even bigger than it probably would have been. If she just had all of these workers left to work. Then the Widow Mine would have probably killed like around four. So doubling the effect here by mistake. So, uh, going into Colossi, we see first Colossus already in production and the Thermal Lands as well. And we'll probably even see a few Templars later on with Storm. While Estat is just doing the usual good thing, I think one can be of different opinion here. Where you usually say that Terran is supposed to deal some kind of damage to the Protoss early on, where Terran usually does not want to let the Protoss get their tech up and um, get the get the Death Ball army up. That will be pretty difficult to beat later on, especially once Templars come into play and when you play, when you play Bio. So let's see if... Um, yeah, this looks as if there will be a move out here really soon. Uh, seems as if Estata does not really want to let her opponent get that third base quite so easily. Or maybe not. I mean, these units were moving around sus suspiciously. So I was really expecting them to walk across the map in just a second here. But maybe they will. Oh, Zealots here. And now we can even see the cheaper charge upgrade. 100 100 it only costs right now and uh, not 200 200 anymore as is already transferring a few workers that are oversaturating the other bases anyways so now the third nexus is done there's the move out finally by a a little bit late actually but what do we have for Azalus? we have one colossus so far there is another one in production but it's only halfway done uh, the Robo is getting Chrono Boosted, but it's still taking some time. Finally, we can... Uh, finally, Azalus has enough resources uh, in order to get the upgrades. And there, the High Templar Archive is incoming. Maybe a little bit quick on the tech here. And maybe a little few... Too few units. But we'll see. I mean, Marines die pretty quickly to the Colossi. They got nerfed with Legacy of the Void, but they are still kind of okay. I think the really big problem will be the tank and the Liberator here. Especially once uh, one set up. It really needs to take out the Liberator before it can siege. Nah, not the best positioning once more, but of course the tank will help to zone out the units as well. And it seems no, no way. I mean, yeah, there you can see it. As long as the Marines can't really get close to the Colossi, the Colossi, because of their long range, can easily take out these Marines even while standing underneath the Liberation Zone or close to the tank here. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. One tank alone cannot really take out these Colossi so easily. Still has to be careful there. One of those Colossi was unfortunately standing right underneath this Liberation Zone. Another one is now, I think. Yeah, taking a lot of shots here. And also the other Colossi die as well. And with no Colossus on the field, which means no AoE. Yes, there's barely army units left for Estatius. So she probably will have to retreat eventually for now. But the follow-up push of Estatu will be so much more potent here. Because... The only thing she needs to replace are marines, maybe a tank, maybe a few marauders if she wants to build them, but she doesn't even want to. So it will just be her basic forces, while the Protoss has to get like three Colossus in one minute. And that will be really problematic. I mean, a or let, let's say two minutes. I mean, a Stata can build up a force like that in two more minutes. But Azalis cannot really build up a force she had, a force like the one she had two minutes ago in two minutes so that that just won't work now that follow-up push will be really problematic unless of course and Sata gives here enough time 
in order to get Storm through, and then we would have a different AoE here. Out for her, but I don't know if the time will be enough. Just too few units here as Tata pressing through. One Colossus out at least. So this might actually be the saving grace once more. Trying to micro it back a little bit, but unfortunately not far away from these Vikings. And should she lose that base over to the left hand side, the third one, this game will be done. Especially since Estate is taking a third base of her own right behind this attack. Yeah, okay. Evacuating the probes already. Azalis knows that she's going to lose the third nexus over here. But like I said, I mean, it doesn't matter. If she loses the third nexus, this game will be over. Because as we can see, the income is already a little bit better for the Terran due to mules. Because they are both in two bases. But uh, the mules just help a little bit more. Yeah, third base is dead. Uh, almost all of the forces of uh, Stutter are still standing. It's 71 to 19 in army supply. And uh, uh, even going into Immortals, but an Immortal won't really help at all. Vikings will easily take out that one Colossus. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I will drink some tea. Arkham AoE will not suffice. GG well played. And it's to takes the series 3 to 0.